With this movie, we take a look at a very tasty little feature of anime, and that happens to be Bone Dynamics. Bone Dynamics very quickly and easily add a level of automation to your animations that saves you a bunch of time by adding believable motion automatically to your characters. We're going to do this in two parts for the simple reason that we're going to build it the first time and it'll be almost right, but something just is not going to work correctly. And then we'll correct that in the second part. And believe me, this is not an exercise in futility. It's just a way to help identify problems when you start working with more and more complex characters and how to build your rigging for your characters. Now the section immediately following this is rigging very specifically, but this will get you seeing some of the effects of rigging correctly and incorrectly specifically to Bone Dynamics. So we're working with just a lovely, adorable little child here. And what we want to do is make this hair have a little bit of spring to it so that when we move the head to the left or the right or, or rock it back and forth, this hair kind of springs back and forth the way you would expect it to in a comic type of presentation. So the first thing we need to do is add a bone layer. So I'll come down to the lower right hand corner, click new layer and select a bone. The first thing I'm going to do is move this up so you can see it, but then also rename this back to something like uh, baby head and select OK. Now we need to get each one of these layers into that and we simply do that by dragging up there and you can see the little red divider line that lets us know that it's becoming a subset of the one above it. So we're dragging each one of those layers into the baby head layer right here and I can collapse that with a disclosure triangle and we have left our one layer that is the bone layer so we'll add bones keyboard shortcut to do that is of course A for add. Now like we've seen in some of the other animation sections or bone sections the human figure usually has one bone that all the others kind of orbit around or take their motion cues from and that's the hip Bone. Well, we don't have a body here, so we want to create a single bone that is the, the focus point of everything going on. And we'll create one main bone right here for the head. So this will function like the hip bone that we've seen in some of the other movies previously. Then I'll click and drag, and we're going to create some our multiple bones here that will give that bounce to our hair. The next thing I want to do is to go ahead and come back to my bone selection tool. That's keyboard shortcut B for bone and I will right click or option click if you're our control click on the Macintosh to move that figure over to the left a little bit and the reason is we're going to open the bone constraint window. We can keep this window open as long as we're working with bones. We don't need to close it after each function. And here's where we start adding the bone dynamics. It's a little checkbox right here in the window. I'll select the main or the first bone, the head bone as it were here but I don't want to engage bone dynamics for that. I want this one to be rock solid and I want the hair to be bouncy on top of the head. So because of that, I really don't want to have any dynamics associated with this first bone, so I won't engage it. I'll select the next bone down the inverse kinematic chain and engage the bone dynamics. Now by default, the values come up two for torque force, two for spring force, and then one for dampening force. I'm not going to adjust those values right now, but there's reasons we would want to later. We might play with it in the next section. The torque force is how much the bone is willing to turn. At each joint of the bone, it's got a little point of rotation, and that is where the torque force comes into play. Likewise, for spring force, it's kind of how bouncy and, and how much tendency there is to go the opposite direction after you bend it one way. And then finally, the last one, dampening force, is how much force is applied, or I should say subtracted, from the actual process that's going on. The same way when you click a spring and it goes and kind of fades away, that's what the dampening force does. So I'll leave this as the default. I'll select the next bone. We'll engage bone dynamics one more time. And then finally, the last one will do that as well. Pretty easy to work with. I'll go ahead and close this window and move our character back over. Now the bone dynamics mean nothing unless you allow anime to work over time because what it's doing is figuring out the motion over time. So again we're getting very very close to the actual animation portion of working with anime but some of these effects only work in animation. What I'll do is come down here to 24 seconds I'm just kind of or 24 frames I'm just kind of picking that randomly and I'm going to add a keyframe by either right clicking or control clicking on the timeline say add keyframe 
and this will establish a baseline for the motion here. We've got a complete section on animation coming up. This will make much more sense when we get into that. But between frame 1 and frame 24, I don't want any motion. And then I'm going to add the motion. So this first keyframe is just to hold it in place. It lets Anime know that eh, nothing's changed here. We'll keep the value the same. I'm going to move down the timeline a little bit to 30 frames. But now I'm going to use the Bone Manipulation tool. That's the keyboard shortcut Z. I'm going to grab this main bone and move it to the left and that rotates it a little bit because this one is anchored. Now you may be thinking, I don't see any dynamics going on. What is up with this? And it's because we're simply moving it. Anime hasn't calculated those dynamics yet. Automatically right now it is actually adding keyframes to our scene and we would need to go ahead and take a look at that. Let me scroll down here. There we go at 30. I'm going to come back here to 36. I'm going to grab this and bend it the other way. We see it automatically adding to the bones further down the inverse kinematic chain. And then I'm going to go ahead and come back to 42 and get our head going just about straight up. Now if I drag around the timeline, we can start to see this motion a little bit because it's starting to think about it. Right here, it doesn't look like we've got it. Let's go ahead and play this animation. I'll click the play button on the transport controls there. And we see we've got kind of a nice springy hair going on, but we've got a weird face distortion. And that's what we'll fix in our next movie.